Hi, I'm Mike. Normally this time of year, we're heading off to auction with calves to bring the one paycheck that the ranch earns each year. This year, however, we're doing things just a little bit differently and putting off that paycheck. And today is the first step in seeing if this gamble pays off on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Welcome back. It's mid-October, and for the ranch that means one thing. It's time to sell calves. Since we came to the ranch, it's always been done this way. Calves are born in the spring, their moms raise them over the summer, and in October, we bring them all in, sort off the calves, and they're loaded onto a truck. From the ranch, they've always went to Belfouche, South Dakota, to the livestock exchange, where they're sold, at auction, to the highest bidder. The whole setup, well, well, it seems a bit like a setup to me. Over the years of doing it this way, uh, we were told this is just how the system works. But I got to thinking about the how and the why the cattle system is set up the way it is. Let's take a step back from agriculture for a second and look at a different picture, a different product, and see how it all shakes out. It doesn't matter what service or product we choose. I don't think it'll make much of a difference. So let's say that you make shoes. You spend all year long making a few good pair of shoes. They are good shoes in your opinion, and others that have tried them out, well, they really like them too. Now, you can't sit around with hundreds of pairs of shoes laying around, so you decide that you better sell them. But when you go to sell them, you're told that it doesn't matter how good your shoes are or how much money you have put into them, there's a set price this year for shoes, and that's what you're gonna get. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe you can take your shoes to a small group of folks. Then they get a chance to bid on your shoes. But even then, they're not gonna pay more than a set amount for your shoes. After all, they're gonna take your shoes, add some laces, maybe package them, maybe even market them. And well, their time and effort to get your shoes to the person who is actually gonna be wearing them, well, it's worth something and they have figured out exactly how much money they want to make off your shoes. So they know what they'll be paying you for your shoes. It doesn't matter how much money you have into them. In the first place, they tell you what your shoes are worth, no matter how great they are. You're an electrician. Your job is to make sure that people have power in their house. When they flick that switch, a light comes on and you are one of the best in the business. You pride yourself in following all the rules, making sure everything's safe, and the homeowner is happy with your services. But before you can bill the homeowner for your work, they get to tell you what you're worth. You've already done all the work. You have the place working great. The lighting is perfect. Every switch works. Every circuit is set up perfectly. But you don't get to say what your work is worth. The person paying you for your work determines what you're worth, and you get exactly what they say you'll get paid. This, my friends, is very much like the cattle industry and how it works. Every year that we've been on the ranch uh, up until now, we've taken our calves to auction. There's a room full of buyers that, that bid on the cattle that come in, and they bid based on the weight of the calves. Heavier calves might be worth a bit more because they don't have to put as much work into getting them bigger, but they know exactly what they want to pay per calf. And so do their bosses at the feedlots where these calves will be going. This year on the ranch, we're shaking things up a bit. First off, I'm not really thrilled with the idea anymore of somebody telling me what my time, effort, and finished product is worth. Going back to those shoes or the electrician, shouldn't they be allowed to set their own prices? If those shoes are really good quality or comfortable, they might be worth more. And I'll always pay an electrician more if there's less of a chance that my house will burn down by him being more qualified and safer. If you priced your shoes too high and people didn't buy them, then you'd lower your price. So why do farmers and ranchers get told what their product is worth for corn to peas, soybeans, and yes, even cattle? The American farmer and rancher only receives an average of 15 cents per dollar spent on their product from the farmer ranch. 
if that electrician billed me for $100 and when I got the bill, all I had to do was pay $15 to the electrician, well, that works out good for me. Not so much for the electrician. So yes, this year, things on the ranch are changing a bit and we've decided not to sell our calves right away. There are many options available for direct to consumer sales and we've been doing that for the last few years on a small scale. We might be ramping things up a little bit and who knows, maybe someday you'll go to your favorite restaurant and see Wyoming Ranch Beef on the menu. But we're still in a system that is what it is. We will end up selling a number of our calves but we want to make an effort to sell what we want to sell and what we feel will be best for the ranch. In years past, one day in October, every calf was loaded up and taken away. It didn't matter how much they weighed, how big they were, their age, their sex, didn't matter. But this year, we're weaning our calves right here on the ranch and taking control of our business. Each year that we have done this, it always ends the same way, with a paycheck in the ranch's hand at the end of the day. This year, there is no paycheck, not yet. And this, for us, is uncharted territory. That one paycheck for the year has been postponed. In hindsight, this should have been done years ago when the ranch was in better shape financially. But we feel that this is one of those things that we need to do in order to keep the ranch around for years to come. So as each cow and her calf are moved through the corrals, we separate the pair. The calves are sent one way and the cows are sent another. But this time, there's no cattle truck waiting for the calves. Instead, they'll stay on the ranch to grow and to give us time to figure out what to do next. If we sold calves today, we wouldn't make enough money to pay expenses. And doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results, according to Albert Einstein, is the definition of insanity. I'm not one to wait for a problem to fix itself because in all reality, our problem is somebody else's solution. If we aren't making the money, somebody else is. And if we aren't making enough to cover expenses, then somebody might be making too much on the other side. Our calves will enjoy their time here on the ranch. Their moms, in all reality, seem relieved to pass them on to us for a little bit of babysitting. And the great part is that they're still only a fence away. They can come visit their calves, hang out, and chat. But it's time to grow up for the calves and the ranch. Change is never easy. It was also Albert Einstein who said, the world as we have created is a process of our own thinking. It can't be changed without changing our thinking. The way that farmers and ranchers sell their crops was set up hundreds of years ago. And I believe that in the beginning, it was to the farmer's benefit to take bids and have auctions. But now, as happens so often in life, somebody figured out a way to manipulate that system. And that system cannot be changed without changing our way of thinking. Maybe I'm a little bit too optimistic, but I would rather be this than worn down, or worse yet, beat down by a system that I just hope to, to work in my favor every couple of years. It's not hard to take control of your own future, but it's scary and it can be a lot of work. Our next step for these calves, now that they're all sorted off, is to separate them based on weight. Uh, we'll get them some weaning vaccinations and of course get them eating hay and some other supplements, which actually already seems to be happening already. I don't mind adding that I actually like keeping these guys around a little bit longer. Uh, they're, they're the result of another long year on the ranch and I'm proud to look at them and say that this is what we do. Hit that subscribe button now and continue with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. We have a new video coming out, coming out this week where we get a chance to take a peek inside a cow and really get a look at the future of the ranch. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and check out our website, rwyomonglife.com. I'll see you soon. Until then, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our 
Wyoming Life.